All right, we're getting started utilizing the APS system. We've just discussed the 3GX, and now we're gonna talk about the fundamentals of utilizing the APS system. First and foremost, we need to have a radio that has an idle up capability. In addition to that, we also need to have a three position switch for our gyro. Reason being, we need to have an APS mode, we need to have a 3GX mode, and we need to have a GPS mode. So we need three positions in order to do so. So we must have that. Let's get started and look inside the radio here. And first thing we want to look at is throttle curve. For throttle curve in our normal, we want to have a nice linear line. This is important for the APS system for being used during APS as well as GPS modes. It enables it to control throttle uh, more linear and enables it to have smooth operation. So we want to make sure we have, again, a linear line there. Our idle up, I'm using idle up one here, is set at 70%. Uh, this throttle position can be adjusted to your needs. And when you need to adjust it is when you're doing your calibration test. Uh, when you are calibrating your helicopter and checking for vibration, you need to adjust this either up or down depending on your particular application. Uh, so if you do need to uh, pass the vibration test and you've been unsuccessful, an easy way to ensure that you can pass is to adjust this number, so maybe slow down your head speed in order to ensure a smooth operation, vibration free, and that will enable the best performance with your APS unit. Now, going down to gyro sensitivity here, we're, here's where, again, where we need to have the three positions. The first one here is our 3GX mode. And this is where the helicopter takes its command for the tail. The other two settings are for the APS and have nothing to do with the tail compensation. It's only this top one, 3GX, which drives the helicopter throughout its whole operation. Right now, in ABC tail lock, we're at 55% with this rotor head speed that we're doing at 70% now in our throttle curve. When we move to APS mode, which is the center stick here, we have it set at zero. This will give us APS mode. This also sets the home point and also our A and D points while doing our flight calibration. Moving down one more, it's set to normal, 30% here, and this is for our GPS flight mode. Uh, this enables the helicopter to fly home uh, when needed, and also for setting up the flight parameters. So these are just some of the basic settings for utilizing the APS flight system. All right, the next step we need to do is set up our fail-safe settings. Again, within the gyro sensitivity area of your radio, you're gonna to need to make some adjustments. And one of them in particular you need to adjust is the actual GPS setting. What we're gonna do, as you noted initially, is that we had normal and 30% for our regular operation. But for our fail-safe, we need to make a change. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this as high as we can go, which is 100% for this fail-safe procedure. It's only for fail-safe. Once we've done our fail-safe setting, we'll go back in and change that back to 30. But for now, it's at 100%. Next, what we'll do is we'll go into our fail-safe setting here, and we're gonna record, let's first record our gyro setting. We're gonna press and hold to set, and you'll notice that it says position 83. Had I not done this, this setting would have been probably like minus 30. But it's imperative that we stick in 100 into the actual gyro menu in order so that our GPS system, when testing, we can get the desired result of four lights. We'll talk about that a little bit more in our next video. But let's go up and we need to set our throttle. Okay, you need to make sure, first of all, that your throttle is in your idle one position when you set this. You're gonna make sure you're on throttle channel, and then you wanna store this. 
you store your setting. Right now it's recording 62% output. If I were to put this in normal mode, that changes to five because I have my stick all the way down. That wouldn't be good. We want to make sure, again, that we're in idle up. The reason being is that in order for our helicopter to fly back home in GPS, in the GPS setting, we need to have power to do so. Without power, we can't fly back to our home position. We need to go back to our gyro settings now, now that we've set that. And we're going to take this number and put it back to the normal 30% that we had initially. Our settings are already stored in the failsafe menu, so we're safe there. And this concludes the failsafe setup for the APS operation. All right, our next segment here on the APS is checking out the flight commands. And one easy way to check that out is utilizing the lights on the APS. Under mode, when we switch into APS on our radio, you'll notice that the light is solid under mode there. Under GPS, it's flashing. Okay, this is how we know that we've set up our radio correctly. The other thing we want to watch and look for is to make sure that the status light on the 3GX is flashing. If it's not flashing, most likely the APS and 3GX are not synced. If your light were to look like this, solid, they're not communicating and therefore the APS is not able to work correctly. So make sure that it is working when you have your cables connected here. You want to make sure, again, that the status light is flashing. Flashing light means that they are communicating. There's one last test we need to take and that is when we switch off our radio to fly home. And this is why it was imperative when we showed you in this last segment the failsafe position and setting that to 100 in the GPS mode. Because I'm switching off my radio now, like a loss of signal, and watch. You see those four lights? That enables your helicopter to fly home. Hi, I'm Jeff Fassfinder with Align, and today we've been discussing the 3GX and the APS system. The next thing we're going to do is the calibration process of the APS unit. What you'll simply do is press and hold the set button on the APS unit for three seconds. What this will do is get the first LED lit green, it's the link light. What you want to do is fixate on the GPS sensor right here. This will be your center point. You'll rotate your helicopter around the axis of this point here. So basically you're going to rotate your helicopter 360 degrees around this point, the GPS sensor. Make sure you note that, GPS sensor. Then once that happens, you'll have a series of two lights lit once it completes, and there will be red in color. You'll stand the helicopter vertically, again on this axis, rotate your helicopter vertically, do a 360 once again, but with the helicopter vertical, you go around that axis, and when you do, the two uh, lights on the APS unit, both link and GPS, will turn from red to green. And that will conclude the calibration of your APS unit. All right, we just talked about the calibration test. Now we're going to do the vibration test. Once the helicopter has been calibrated, uh, the APS unit, I should say, we do this by pressing the set button quickly. You'll have two lights flashing at you, green lights, both link and GPS. What you want to do is get your helicopter in normal flight, lift it up, get into a hover, switch into your idle one position, and ensure that your helicopter is vibration free. How you do that is you'll hover for 30 seconds, land the helicopter. Once you land, you want to look at the two lights on your APS unit. Again, they need to be flashing green. If they're not flashing green, most likely they'll be flashing red, indicating that your helicopter has too much vibration. Now, what you can do is adjust the head speed to smooth out the operation of your helicopter. You can also check your blade grips to ensure that they're tight, but not too tight, so that we don't get any lead lag. And that will help you smooth out the operation. You're gonna to need to retest your helicopter, 
put it up in the hover again and make sure that you have green lights when you land. When you have green lights when you land, you'll know that your helicopter is vibration free and it's going to perform optimally with both the APS and the 3GX. So make sure you do that and that concludes the vibration test. Alright, now we're going to start with pre-flight check. Before we ever lift off the ground, the things that we want to look for prior to flying our helicopter. In APS, or on the APS, we need to look at the link light. We want to make sure that the link light is showing a green status light. If it is red, it means that you did not pass the vibration test initially. Make sure that you pass the vibration test. Failure to pass the vibration test will not allow the two to link correctly and therefore not function as the APS should. So it's important that you do that. Okay, so that's the first light, the green link light. The next one is GPS. You want to be in an unobscured area where there aren't telephone poles and things with magnetic conductivity. Uh, and you want to make sure you have a green light on the GPS light. It, that means that you actually have a satellite signal and it's going to be able to perform. The other thing that you want to do with your helicopter is check the swash movement when you move your helicopter. You tilt it to the left, you tilt it to the right, you make sure that it opposes that direction. Same thing when you tilt the helicopter fore and aft. When you tilt it to the front, the swash should tilt backwards. You want to do that in normal flight mode, and what I mean by normal is in normal 3GX mode. But you also want to do with your radio, switch into APS mode and do the same type of test. Again, tilting the helicopter, ensuring that the swash is moving in the correct way. It should oppose your movement. So if you're tilting to the left, it should drop to the right, the swash. Moving to the right, it should drop towards the left. Same thing on the elevator. Make sure you check this to ensure safe operation of your helicopter and to ensure that your EPS is functioning as it should.